Stone Creek, how are we doing? Happy Labor Day. Hey, if you're in the lake, I need you guys to pull over in a cove right now and listen to this message. Hey, if you're in the beach or on the beach, let's, let's turn down the little Jesus jams, right? And let's turn up this sermon because, I mean, I really believe this is going to be something incredible this morning. So we're in the second week of a series uh, called It's Just a thought. Week one, last week, uh, Stephen walked us through, man, how do we feed our thoughts? Like, what do we put in our minds and our thoughts every day? What, what kind of spiritual diet do we need to go on? And he even challenged us um, to go on a social media fast this week. How'd that go? <laughs> it's just a thought, a phrase used to communicate an unimportant idea. A, a, a way to minimize a stupid idea and an insecure way to address a problem or idea. Hey guys, it's just a thought. Hey, 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 don't take me too serious. It's just a thought. Hey, hey, please don't judge this next thing I'm gonna say because it's just a thought. Hey, nobody else in this room probably feels the same way but it's just a thought. Hey, hey let's, let's not spend too much time on this next thing because it's just a thought. But is it? Are the thoughts that go on in your mind just a thought? For real. Tell me one time that you thought something just one time. I mean, it's like Girl Scout cookies and Pringles. You can't just have one. Thoughts, man, they snowball on top of each other. Thoughts begin to, to, to breed in us a worldview of our world, our view of, of, of other peoples, and even our view of ourselves. Have you ever asked the question, man, how did I get here? Have you ever asked the question after mistake after mistake, after job loss after job loss, after marriage after marriage, after addiction after addiction? Man, how did... And how did I get here? How did I become the man I am today? How did I become the, the mother I am today? How did I become the teenager I am today? Well, maybe it's, well, it's just a thought. And, and trying to examine our own thoughts is pretty, it's pretty difficult. I mean, if you're anything like me, don't, don't you shove your thoughts down deep into your mind, into your soul, into that dark place? And if, and if anybody ever kind of gets a glimpse of your thought life, wouldn't that be humiliating? Wouldn't that be embarrassing? Would you ever recover? So we begin to, so we begin to minimize our thoughts. We begin to act like they're not there. We begin to live a life... That's just our life, because if people actually heard the thoughts in our mind, well, maybe, maybe we'd be crazy. And then you, then you get used to living in this darkness of your thoughts. And the darkness becomes so normal that your eyes begin to adjust. You, you begin to feel and believe and think that this is just your new normal in life until you realize just how long you've been there. Do you remember the story of, of the Thai boys two summers ago that got, that got stuck in a cave? Twelve Thai uh, soccer players and their coach got stuck two and a half miles into this cave. The, the rains begin to come. The waters begin to rise in this cave. It was like an international mission of countries coming together, including the United States, to try to rescue these Thai boys from the cave. They had the mission of bringing food to the Thai boys and, and oxygen, oxygen lines. And, and finally, one Thai Navy SEAL uh, made contact with the boys and his chest cam shone light on the boys. And one of the Thai boys asked this question. He goes, how long have we been here? And the Thai Navy SEAL said this, 10 days. And all the boys begin to cry. Maybe you've been in darkness so long, you don't even remember or know how long it's been. Maybe it's been a few weeks. Maybe it's been a few months. Maybe it's been your entire life, but you've been living in darkness forever. So many of us have felt so comfortable in our thoughts that we've just failed to realize how long we've lived in them. 
And the crazy thing about the rescue mission is several experts on the scene uh, c- kind of devised a plan for, for, for the rescue mission just to be pressed pause. I said, hey, give it a couple weeks, maybe even a couple months. We'll supply them with oxygen, oxygen. We'll supply them with food, but the waters will begin to rescind. But the rain kept coming. The waters kept rising and different experts came on the scene and said, we have to act now. Time heals all things, doesn't it? Or does it? So often in our lives, we just think once we get past this season, once we get past this year, once we get past this week or this day or this this moment in time, things will begin to shift and to change in our lives. But we have to act now. No more waiting. If you desire to have healthy relationships, if you desire to have a healthy life, today is the day. You and I, we've all been held captive handcuffed by our thoughts for way too long. But what if we could flip the script? What if we could hold our thoughts captive, we could handcuff them and sentence them to life? Can I pray with us real quick? Hey, Jesus, I thank you for this time. I pray, Jesus, as we jump into your word, I pray, Jesus, that you'll just release every every stronghold in our life, every barrier in our life, Every wall that we've built, I pray, Jesus, that we could take a deep breath, that, Jesus, we could think about our thoughts, think about what we believe, and I pray, Jesus, that your word, that your teachings will change our lives forever. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, we'll be in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. A little backstory. Paul is the author of 2 Corinthians. Uh, He's writing to some Christians in Corinth, and what's happening with the Christians in Corinth is kind of a... Kind of a weird, weird thing. The Christians in Corinth kind of have this this frustration with Paul. They begin they begin to think that 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 Paul is different in writings than he is in person. The people in Corinth begin to believe that their thoughts are actually true, and so so they actually believe Paul when he was writing the letters to them that he was one person, that he was very man um, in control, that he was aggressive, that that he was uh, kind of this. This, this big man in, in his writings, but then when he came in person, he would become this like really timid guy. And, he, and he'd be kind of low-key and soft-spoken. And so the Corinthians were like, man, I don't know what's going on. We, we think that, that you're one way here and one way there. And so Paul addresses them in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And he says this, he goes, by the humility and gentleness of Christ, I appeal to you. I, Paul, who am timid when face to face with you, but bold towards you in a way, I beg you that when I come, I may not have to be as bold as I expect to be towards some people who think that we live by the standards of this world. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war with this world. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Very end, it says this. It says, says, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ, to Jesus. Uh, Paul starts off the letter with some wisdom. He's like, I I, I get it. Some of you guys are thinking I'm really bold in the letters, and some some of you guys are thinking uh, when I come in person, I'm not as bold anymore. But look, look, let's not fight like the world fights. Those weapons the world uses are way different than the weapons we use as believers. But then he drops this this nugget, this bomb of wisdom. And And he says this, we, you, I, Christians, believers in Jesus, you and I, we all need to take captive every thought, and make those obedient to Jesus. Every thought. Every good thought, every bad thought, every bad thought to the drivers as you're driving into work. Wives, every bad thought you have about your husband when he can't shut, shut off work. Every bad thought you have with your neighbor when they cut their grass and then they blow their grass into the street or the leaves into your yard. Every thought that you have towards your kids when they're just having a wild, wild day. Every lustful thought, every greedy thought, every frustrating thought, every harmful thought, every suicidal thought. Every thought, can you take it captive? Can you chain it up? Can you throw it into the back of a cop car and sentence it to life in jail? 
Paul knows what it feels like to be held captive. Paul knows that, that about three times in his life for over five years, he was held in a jail cell or held, held, held uh, bonded and binded together. Just before he wrote this letter to, to the, 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 the Christians in, Corinthian, or in, in Corinth, he was held captive and, and actually um, handcuffed to, to another man. What thoughts do you struggle with the most? Like, like let's, let's go there right now. There's, there's no way that you will be able, that I will be able to hold our thoughts captive unless we have an eyewitness. And you're the eyewitness. It's time for you and I to take the stand in front of the jury, point our finger at our thoughts and say, man, you've ruled me for too long. You've controlled me for too long. You've held me captive for too long. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I had a, an MRI on my shoulder. It's not that big of a deal, but Joe and I got in an argument in the office. He body slammed me. He's way bigger than you think he is. Just kidding. I was playing basketball several months ago, and I kind of got bumped into the wall. And so I walked into the doctor's office, and, and JoJo, the nurse, uh, kind of kind of walked me through the whole process. I said, man, what, what's going on here? She said, oh, we're going we're gonna to give you an MRI, but we're going to kind of fill uh, your shoulder up with this liquid so we can see some contrast during the MRI. And so I said, hey, hey Joe, 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 I don't, I don't like needles. When I was 13, I got a, a ton of shots to help me kind of get back into school. And I, I went to go get shots, and the nurse sat me down and said, hey, Ryan, we're not going to use a needle this time. We're just going to use the thing that blows it in your arm. Really? This is a real thing. Check it out. Needleless shots. Hey, what would you do if you sat down and said, hey, real quick, it's cool. I'm going to throw a vaccine in your arm, but I'm just going to blow it in your arm. Freak you out, right? So I'm sitting here going, hey, look, uh, this MRI thing, this is wild. This is crazy. You're going to fill me up uh, with a shot. What else? And she goes, oh, it should burn. What do you mean it should burn? Will it hurt? No, it shouldn't hurt too bad. Has, has anybody ever said that to you? Hey, this shouldn't hurt really bad. <laughs> Means it's going to hurt really bad. So let me get this straight. You're going to stick a needle in my arm. It may burn for a little while. And then what? And she's like, oh, your arm's going to feel funny. Um, but, but it should return back to normal activity within two hours. I'm sitting there, man. I begin to sweat. And niece, the doctor, walks in. I go, hey, niece, I know I'm a big dude. I don't like needles. I know JoJo said you're going to stick me with a needle. You're going to inject some stuff in me. It may burn for a little while. And my arm should return back to normal at some point. Like, I think I'm just going to leave. Can I just get out? Can you let me go? I don't know if this is worth it. And as I begin to actually share my thoughts with Anise and JoJo, I really realized how ridiculous my thoughts were. Like, really, Ryan, you're a grown man. This isn't that big of a deal. Uh, Anise goes, all right, Ryan, here goes the shot. Man, it pinched just a little bit. Hey, it didn't burn. Hey, my arm didn't go back to normal after hours and went back to normal in minutes. Hey, Anise, hey, Jojo, you guys are rock stars. Hey, the MRI results, <laughs> just some tendonitis in my shoulder. I guess I'm just getting old. Have you ever had thoughts that just begin to run in your mind and it begin to dictate how you feel or what you believe? You're, what, you, what, what thoughts do you need to speak out loud today? Like, like seriously, right now, what are some thoughts that you actually need to speak out today? In the chat. Will you do it? <laughs> what is that thought that reoccurs and it goes on and on in your mind? I want you to put the thought in the chat and then find the little chain emoji because you're going to bind them up and you're going to hold your thoughts captive because your thoughts aren't holding you captive anymore. If you really want to live, live a freedom, a life of freedom, you and I have to step out of the darkness. So what thoughts do you need to make captive today and make them obedient to Jesus? Hey, today, first step, just take your thoughts captive. Next week, Joey's going to come along and walk us through how to make our thoughts actually obedient to Jesus. Uh, Paul reiterates this idea in Colossians chapter 3. He says this. He goes, hey, man, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, covetedness, which is idolatry. On account of these things, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, 
malice, slander, obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self and its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Paul is begging you and I to put things to death. He's begging you to give your thought life a death sentence. Hey, these things don't have to rule you anymore. You pick. It's either you or your thought life. Who or what is going to die first? If you and I, if we don't choose to actually put our thoughts to death, you and I will be sitting on death row just waiting for our last meal. And I I get it. Some of the thoughts in your mind and my mind, we create ourselves. Some of the thoughts that happen in my mind is because of what I watch or what I listen to or maybe even who I'm around. But there's some thoughts that have been created in your mind that weren't created by you. There have been some thoughts that have been created by other people. And maybe people have said certain things to you. Maybe people have said, man, you're not beautiful enough. Hey, you're not skinny enough. Hey, you're just always going to be just a low-level middle manager. Hey, dad, you're never going to provide enough. Hey, mom, you're never going to be good enough. And maybe different statements have been said in our lives and those thoughts begin to hold us captive. I I give you permission this morning, today, to put handcuffs on those thoughts and throw them in jail. Send your thoughts captive. You have to, to, to to send your thoughts captive. You have to confront them. Speak your thoughts out loud. Reach out to a trusted friend and and just have a vent sesh. Grab a journal this week and begin to just write down your thoughts. And maybe you just grab your phone different times throughout the day as thoughts begin to pop into your mind and just begin to draw out that list of your thoughts. If you and I really believe that there can be a thought change in our minds, If you and I really believe that the darkness of our thoughts could could shift to light, we have to speak it out. And so many of us, we just think it's too late. Ryan, this this is just the way I am. Anybody have like a grandma or grandpa in your life and man, they just do some things that are just a wild and your mom or your dad or your aunt and uncle go, that's just the way they are. Sometimes in our lives, we just come in, this is it. Like I'm just damaged goods. I'm just a half-priced person. Like, there's really no hope for me. And and let me say this to you. The hope of redemption is not over for you. The rescue mission is not over. Paul says this in 2 Corinthians 5.17. He goes, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has gone. The, the new has come. The, the old can be gone. Your old thought life could be over. The way you continue to think about yourself could be done today in Christ. As we release our lives to the life of Jesus, Jesus promises us that our old life can and will be gone forever. So there's hope for you. There's hope for me. You're not damaged Guts. You don't just live a life floating around thinking it will never, ever get better because of the mistakes and the decisions that you've made. Jesus says, hey, if, if, if you are in me, if you are a new creation, the old, the old life is gone and the new life is here. You remember the Thai boys? Remember how they were stuck in the cave? Day 10, a Thai Navy SEAL made contact with them and gave them some food and some water But it wasn't until several days later that the all 12 boys and their coach was rescued from the cave. But something happened in between day 10 and the rescue mission that would transform the mission forever. 38-year-old volunteer Saman Kunan died in the middle of the mission to save his boys. His job to supply oxygen to the cave. His job the two and a half mile stretch between the entrance of the cave and the boys. Kunan would would swim down the cave and and leave tanks of oxygen along the way. And tragically, 
Along the way, he lost consciousness and ran out of oxygen, the one thing he was providing for the boys. Simon lost his life to rescue the 12 kids and their coach from darkness, from loneliness, from hopelessness. I can't imagine what the boys were beginning to think, what the boys were beginning to feel as they're stuck in this dark, lonely place, not knowing the rescue mission that was unfolding before them. Look right at me. A rescue mission is unfolding before your eyes. You may be in a dark place. You may feel stuck. You may feel lonely. You may feel like your thoughts are just controlling every movement, every decision of your life. But let me tell you about a rescue mission God has designed for you since the beginning of the time. And Jesus, early on in his life, early on, early on in his life, he says this um, in Luke chapter four, verse 16. It says, and he came to Nazareth, Jesus, where he'd been brought up and he, and, 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 and as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the, on the Sabbath day and he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him and he unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's talking about himself because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus knows you're hurting. Jesus knows all the hurtful things that have been said to you. And Jesus didn't give up. God sent his son, Jesus, into this dark place, into this cave, into the waters of this world to rescue you. I know it's felt like weeks. Maybe it's felt like months. Maybe you can't even remember a time in your life that you haven't thought the way you thought, but Jesus gave up your, his life so you could have life. He gave up his throne so you and I could actually have a chance in this life. Jesus' body was laid in a cave so you and I could be rescued from this dark place. Will you join him? Will you take up the offer? Will you allow Jesus to rescue you from the dark place? you've been in. You've been held captive too long. Jesus' mission from the very beginning was to release the captives. Just this past week, U.S. Marshals came across almost 40 kids that were trapped and held captive in the state of Georgia. You know what they called the mission? Operation Not Forgotten. Jesus hasn't forgotten you. Jesus is on a mission to restore you. Jesus is on a mission to rehabilitate you. Jesus is on a mission to clear those thoughts, to take those thoughts captive. We let him save you. Can we pray? Jesus, I, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this place. I thank you for these people. Jesus, I pray that we can believe in your mission. I pray, Jesus, that sometimes it doesn't seem like you're there. It doesn't seem like you're on a rescue mission for our lives. But I pray, Jesus, that we can believe it. I pray, Jesus, that we can actually believe in the power of you and that you can actually help us uh, hold our thoughts captive. I pray, Jesus, that our thoughts won't rule us anymore. I pray, Jesus, that we begin to have a trusted friend, a journal or a phone, and we begin to write down the thoughts that we have so we don't become the person we don't want to be. And I pray, Jesus, as as people are listening right now, that they've never experienced your love. If they feel like they're trapped in the cave, in their dark place, Jesus, and, and they're waiting for their rescuer to arrive, I pray, Jesus, that they will know that you're the rescuer that you've you've died for them so they could have life, that you've died for them to restore the relationship relationship between us and God. And if there's anyone out there today who, who wants to give their lives over to the rescue mission of Jesus, who feels trapped, who feels in a dark place, who feel who feels like there's no hope, I pray that they can they can pray something like this. 
hey, Jesus, I want you to rescue me. Jesus, I'm ready to be rescued. I trust you. I believe that you're God. Jesus, I'm ready for you to grab me up and take me from this dark place to this new life and this new hope that you'll bring. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer today, just in a sign of obedience, and one, we want to know, we just want you to raise your hand. I get it. You're all alive, but you can put a little hand raise emoji in the comment section. You can write, I raised my hand, or hey, I am set free, or hey, I have been rescued. And one of our pastors will get in touch with you this week. Hey, why don't we stand together as we worship?